Hey everyone, this is Heather. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I have a product review and card tutorial for you and I'm going to be showing you how to use a Brother Scan and Cut to cut out your stamps. I've been stamping for a really long time, even before we had metal dies, so I kind of got used to fussy cutting out my images, but when dies came out on the market, of course, that makes it so much easier, quicker, and convenient to cut out your stamped images but they can be expensive and the cost can really add up. So I've had my eye on a Brother Scan and Cut for a really long time, ever since I heard that you could cut out your stamps with the Scan and Cut. So I finally broke down and got one and I'm really happy that I did. I think in the long run, I'll actually save a lot of money using it that I would have normally put towards buying metal dies. I'm sure I'll still continue to buy some metal dies, different shapes or backgrounds, but as far as cutting out my stamps, that's the main reason that I got this machine. I decided to go with the SDX125 machine. The main reasons for that was that the screen on the machine is larger. This machine is really quiet and it also has a depth detector. So the blade will come down and test to see how thick your paper is and automatically adjust the blade to that depth. Those three things really sold me on this particular model. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how to cut out your stamps with the Brother Scanning Cut, and then we'll go ahead and finish the card. Using my stamp positioner and some black memento ink, I've gone ahead and stamped my images onto 110 pound weight white cardstock. And the images that I've used today are from Hello Bluebird's Flower Garden Set. I've removed the clear plastic sheet from the top of the mat and I'm going to place my cardstock on the mat. This is a brand new mat, so it's pretty sticky. Just to be 100% sure that it's not gonna slip, I'm gonna place a little bit of washi tape on the edges. I'm going to open up the front of the machine. I've already got the blade loaded in. The machine comes with two really handy tools, a stylus for using on the screen and a scraper to lift your items off the mat. I'm gonna press this top right button to turn on the machine. And there's also a short tray at the back of the machine that you need to pull out as well. On the top of the mat, you'll see that there's a purple arrow. That's the way that you need to feed the mat into the machine. There's handy little guides on the side here to line up your mat. And you just wanna make sure that it's underneath both of those black rollers. We're going to hit the home button. It's going to say that the carriage is going to move. Keep your hands away from the carriage. I'm gonna hit okay. You have a choice of pattern or scan. I'm going to be scanning my stamped images today, so I'm gonna click on scan. You have a choice of whether to just scan it and use it just once, or do you wanna scan this design and save it to your USB? I'm just gonna do this today, so I'm gonna click direct cut. Where would you like to save your scanned image to? Either the scan and cut or your computer. I'm gonna hit scan and cut. One really handy thing when you get to this section is it says scan area 12 by six. You can hit the little tool thing and you can change the scan area. So instead of having it feed everything completely through the machine, you're just going to scan just the top section of 12 by six which it's already on, so I'm gonna hit OK and hit OK again. The bottom button under the home button is to load in the mat. So I'm gonna push that, make sure that the rollers grab that and pull that in. Then I'm gonna click Start. It's going to feed through the machine Make sure that you have enough room at the back of your machine that it doesn't like hit your wall or table or anything like that. I've brought the camera a little bit closer so that you can see that it has scanned in my images, including the mat and the tape and everything. That looks good, so I'm gonna click okay. 
Now these little arrows allow you to shrink the cut area. So what you want to do is just have that highlighted over the images themselves. So make sure that it's not going to get the tape or anything on the mat. So once that looks pretty good, you can click preview. So I realized when I was editing this video that this section did not record very well. So I'm just going to try and redo this. I've hit preview. I've got that little red box around my images. So I'm going to hit OK. And this is where you decide how much of a border you would like around your images. You hit this little icon here. And this will give you your outline distance. If you don't want any white border around, you just leave it as it is and it's going to cut right on the stamped images. But I like a little bit of a white border and I think 0.04 gives you the look of metal dies. It's about the same width. So you can adjust it to a wider border just by hitting the plus size. I like that. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK again. It's going to process. It says please select. I'm going to hit cut. And now I'm going to click start. And you'll see it go in and it's checking the depth of the paper that I've used. And then it's going to begin to cut. Once it's done, it's going to say finish cutting and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to push the unload mat button and then I'm going to click OK and it's going to unload the mat. And since I'm not going to be saving it, I'm just going to take it to the home button and it's going to ask me, do I want to delete these patterns? I've checked and made sure everything cut OK and it did. So I'm going to click OK and I can just turn the machine off. And now here comes the very fun and satisfying part. I'm going to carefully lift off the cardstock. It's going to leave my images on the mat. I really recommend using the included spatula to get your pieces off and check that out. How awesome is that? It gave me this perfect white outline around the image and I just am absolutely thrilled. And I wanted to show you the little B. It even cuts these tiny little delicate pieces that cut around the little antenna and his little feet and his wings. I'm just so impressed with this machine and could not be happier with it. So I'm just going to take my spatula and remove all my die cut stamped images. And a couple of things I wanted to point out really quickly. There's a nice little holder here that you can keep your spatula and your stylus in. And then there's also underneath the feeder, a place where you can keep extra blades, cards, your instructions, everything like that. So that's a really nice handy place to store things. And when you're done, you just fold it up, flip down the screen, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So now that I've die cut all my images with my skein and cut, let's go ahead and make this card. For the base of the card, I have an orange piece of cardstock. It's just an eight and a half by 11 cut scored folded in half. Then I have a piece of white cardstock that's cut to five and a fourth by four. Then I recently picked up these really great hexagon dies at Tuesday morning from Momenta. I used these three sizes to cut out some different colors of cardstock. I have the orange that's the same as the card background, a little bit of a lighter orange, and a dark coral. I've just cut two different sizes from each of the three colors. So I stamped out one of each of the flowers, a couple of leaves, and the little bee. For this first flower, I'm going to be using the Coral Blend tri-blend markers. These are my favorite alcohol-based markers. I've got lots of videos on my channel using these. I'm just going to fill in the entire image with the lightest shade. Then I'm going to go in with the darker shade and I'm going to add that darker color kind of bursting out from that center section all the way around. And add just a little bit in the center there. Then I'm going to go in with the medium shade, 
kind of over color in between those two shades, between the darkest and the lightest. Also add a little bit of that in the center. And then I'm gonna go back to the lighter shade and blend all three of those together. This is just really quick and simple coloring. It shouldn't take long at all. On this next flower, I'm using the Coral Blend. This is the brush tip marker as opposed to the bullet tip that I originally used on the first flower. Again, I've colored it completely with the lightest shade. I'm just gonna flick that darkest shade all the way out from the middle. I'm gonna over color again with that medium shade and blend them together with the lightest. The sort of daisy looking flower, I'm using light yellow blend. With the entire image filled in with the lightest shade, I'm gonna go in with the darker, pull that color out on the petals, and again a little bit towards the center. Add just a little bit of the medium tone in between. And because these colors are so similar, I don't really feel like I need to even go back in with the lightest shade. So this sort of peony shaped flower, I've colored it in completely with the lightest shade of orange. For this one, I'm gonna kind of follow along the fold lines with the darkest shade. Just kind of really loosely go along the edges of that stamped image and add maybe a little bit of shading and shadowing around the edges of some of these outer petals. Then with the medium tone, it's gonna kind of go in between those two colors. And then with the lighter shade, kind of blend everything in together. On the smaller sprig of flowers, I'm gonna use that same orange. I'm gonna fill in all the little flowers completely with the lightest shade. And then only using the darker shade, I'm just gonna kind of fill in the center. This is such a small stamped area, you really don't need to add a whole lot more color. I've got several different leaf shapes here. There's some leaves on the sprig and then some leaves all together, and then a couple of little individual leaves. I'm gonna do the dull green blend on all of these, just fill them in with the lightest shade, and then add just a small bit of the darkest shade. This is really dark, so I'm not gonna use a whole lot. I'm just gonna kind of flick it out from the bottom tip of the leaves, and then add just a little bit of that medium shade in between. And then back to that lightest shade to blend everything in together. And lastly, I'm going back to that same yellow that I did for one of the flowers using the lightest and the darkest shade of light yellow for the body of my bee. And then just so I don't leave his wings completely white, I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade of ice gray blend. I've pulled over my white base and I've gone ahead and adhered some adhesive to the back of all of my hexagons. I'm gonna start placing them on the white panel. And I'm gonna have some of them kind of going off the edge and kind of keep a bit of an even spacing between them just so it looks a little neater. So you just kind of wanna randomly fill in the sections with the different sizes. Then I'm gonna turn my panel over and take my scissors and just trim off any pieces that are hanging off. So have some, having some of these come off the edges just gives a little bit of extra interest to your design. And as you'll notice, I've kept quite a bit of white space on the right hand side because that's where I'm going to focus most of my flowers. So that'll kind of help balance the design out. With Black Memento ink, I've inked up the thank you from the same set. And I'm going to stamp that in the larger of the hexagons on the right hand side. I've placed tape runner on the back of that panel and I'm going to place it on my card base. I've placed adhesive on the back of all of my images except for the bumblebee. I'm gonna go ahead and start building out my scene. It's kind of 
place this one flower up in the right hand corner and tuck the sprig of leaves behind. Then lay down one of the leaves with this smaller pink flower. Add this other flower down here in the right hand corner. Tuck a little leaf in behind there. Also gonna kind of slip this yellow one in. And then lastly, the sprig of flowers. So just sort of keeping everything in the upper and right hand corner. So I felt like my card really needed a little bit more on the background. So I got my watercolors out and mixed in some black paint with a lot of water. And I've got a big paint brush. I've laid my card on a scrap piece of paper and I'm going to begin to tap that paint and give myself some nice splatters all over the card. So I used my heat gun to make sure that my splatters were dry. I've added foam tape to the back of my little bee and I'm gonna place him in the scene. And here's our finished card. I hope you enjoyed this card tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out my channel and subscribe and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.